Sarah Kassam, welcome to Empower Network TV. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be here. And I've noticed that I haven't been the only Australian you've had this week. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what? We got some fantastic Australians in this group. Blue Mountains. Like, this is a place I feel like I need to go to. It's beautiful. It is actually beautiful. Um, yeah. Have you seen photos? No. No, you need to Google it. Okay, Blue Mountains. That <laughs> Jump on amazing. Google Image and have a look there. <clears throat> We've got the most beautiful valleys and it's just very green and the wildlife is just absolutely sensational we're very lucky <laughs> okay okay well the purpose of this is to tell your story to tell your why let's talk about what you offer and if you want to bring peanut butter on the screen you feel free to bring peanut butter on the screen <laughs> yes you, everyone might just hear my daughter who's decided that peanut butter is now and there's no uh, ifs or buts about that but um i am sarah Cassum. And basically I am a few things. I have an organization called Hawkesbury Women in Business, which is a local uh, women in business based uh, networking group. Basically we have events three times a month, roughly. Oh, wow. uh, and we have over 1600 ladies in there, all there to support each other in the Western wow. part of Sydney, Australia. Um, I'm also a small, medium enterprise business coach. Uh, so I like to deal with those startups and those initial ideas. That's why it's very exciting for me. But I do have a big passion for women in leadership. Um, so I do a lot of mentoring in that space for larger organizations and not-for-profits, which are charities. Um, for those who might, might not be sure what an, a not-for-profit actually is. Um, and basically, I help women in specifics get to that point where they are feeling confident and they believe in themselves enough to lead uh, with compassion and in a in a very heart-led way. Mm. You have a you have a network of 1600 women in Western Australia. And these Western are Western Sydney. Yeah. West Western <laughs> Sydney. That's like a big, yeah. big network. It's it it is the name on your is it women in, it's, it's women, in business, women in business, Hawksburg. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we're the Hawkesbury, which is, uh, we are northwest of Sydney. And basically the network scopes out right uh, around the band of the metro area of, of Sydney. So it is a large portion of land. Like someone mentioned today, uh, this week as well, we are a very spread out nation, um, but there we do have a lot of people here. So it is great to see so many people supporting each other so positively and um, connecting where they can and making beautiful business relationships. It's fantastic. Okay. So, okay. So your favorite part of, of women in business is, and then I want to get into why did you do it? How did you do that? That's not easy to do. So, okay. Favorite part though, we, is the connection, the inspiration. What would you say? Yeah. It's the growth. Um, I sincerely love watching the progress that these women make um so a lot of them will come with their doubts and their disbeliefs maybe they might be using language that quite puts themselves down without even realizing it uh they might be embarrassed that they've started a business for instance which is a really common thing believe it or not which i think everyone should be so proud that they have made that cour courageous step of actually starting their own business but it it's a process right so watching them go from that person to really leaning into their business, becoming more confident, learning the tools that they need, upskilling where they need to, and just exploding. Uh, it's the best feeling in the world. <laughs> and to be a part of that, it's such an honor. Wow. Okay, so what's the backstory? Sarah, <laughs> how did you do this? Why did you do this? I don't know, no, I, I do know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, basically it all started, I, I've actually been a small business owner right from the very beginning when I left school. I went straight into management roles um, with, and, and had what was then, what now is called a side hustle. Back then it was just at extra income to help pay rent because I moved out quite early. Um, but as time grew, I got married when I was 21 with me, he's still my husband. He's great. Um, so jokes on everyone who thought I was too young. 
But basically, uh, we then had our first child at 23. Naturally, I stopped work like most women will do uh, for whatever period of time suits them. Um, but basically, our son had a congenital heart problem. So a bit of a trigger warning here. We did spend a lot of time in hospital over that 12 months. And it was we had open heart, um, open heart surgery at four months old. And we were in the children's hospital in and out. It was a lot, especially me being quite young. Um, it was a lot to take in. Now he's fine. He's now 10 years old, which is fantastic. And I think I just gave away my age, but <laughs> um, he's a-okay. Now what happened then was we had another child. And so I couldn't go back to work because I had another baby to take care of. So we were two under two. And um, we were basically in a hole because we could, I couldn't go back to work. He was working around the clock. And then there was that pressure that happened, you know, between him always working, me completely stressed out, um, ready to pull my hair out, swinging, swaying in the corner, going, this is, this is crazy. Why? Like, why? Yeah. Um, and not having money. Um, now, this sort of kept going and obviously things escalate when it comes to monetary pressure. And I think this is why I'm so um, passionate about financial independence for people and finding that where they can, because I felt so much guilt for not being able to contribute. And as someone who was hiring and firing people previously, I was looking at my availability and it was from, you know, 2 a.m. till 4 a.m. If I wouldn't hire me, <laughs> why would anyone else hire me, right? So um, it was just at that point where I'm like, I'm, I felt useless, right? Even though, you know, taking care of two kids, huge task. But at that point when you're, you're, you're just scurrying around in your bag for silver coins, like that's, that's a pretty hardcore position to sort of be in. And you sort of think, well, you know, what, what are we doing? And I remember specific, I remember the day specifically we had, um, I had to get home and we had this little car, this little Ford Focus, and it had um, a little side mirror that was duct taped on. It was just, it was just our A to B, you know, car. And I didn't need to get petrol. The light came on. And so I drove into the petrol station and I had the two kids screaming in the car. The AC wasn't working at all. And I'm sitting there going, Hmm. Right. I just need to get five dollars worth of petrol so I can get home. And it's up the mountain, so it takes fuel. <laughs> anyway, so I was scrounging around trying to find just coins. Just I found the coins eventually, but I just sat there for a moment, and I had this internalized moment of, "Is this my life now? Is this it? Is this is this actually how life is going to be for the rest of it? Because this sucks." And I remember, just remember that moment, just going, okay, I've got two options here. I've got two options. I can either just sit and wallow and this will be it. And I just, I live like this for the rest of my life or I can make it better. I didn't know how to make it better, but I knew I needed to make it better. So pay for my $5, <laughs> pay for my $5 of fuel, got myself up the mountain. By then, probably the light was back on, I, <laughs> but I got a piece of paper out and I started writing. I started writing the things that I was good at and it was writing. It was customer service. It was management. It was leadership. I knew I was good at those things in a previous life. So why couldn't I start to really lean into that again and work out what I can do from home that was going to help build that income back up? Um, and make me feel like I was contributing, which sounds, I look back and I go, but it's just how it is, right? So um, back then, working from home wasn't an option. Um, so we're talking before COVID, before there was this massive ecosystem shift where people were working from home. Um, so I had to really go digging. Uh, and I found something that I could do, which was freelance copywriting. There were still people out there looking. So I managed to start writing for people. I started working with people in LA, um, trying to just ghost write scripts even. I was good at that. So I managed to basically secure enough funding to start a little bookshop because I like literacy. It's my thing. Um, 
And what happened from there is I started this online bookshop thinking, great, something I can do from home. Um, I can start building a network. Everything's great. The problem that I that I had was quite simply, I didn't know anyone in the area. I came from the Northern Beaches and we moved out to the Hawkesbury. So all my network was completely gone. Um, so what was I going to do about that? There was nothing that I could go network wise that I could actually physically take children to. And I had two attached to my hip. So I couldn't necessarily go out to the early morning breakfast with the other business owners or anything like that. So when you, you see that there's a gap and it doesn't suit you, you're probably not alone. <laughs> so I started my own thing. <laughs> and now we've got Hawkesbury Women in Business, which focus on a very inclusive place where um, you can bring children, you can bring, uh, you, you know, pets, you can bring whatever you want. And you know that you're going to be heard and seen. And that has been the greatest thing that has happened. From this, naturally, I ended up going full-time into the consulting because as I built my skills up, I was able to deliver. Um, and that's really brought me to where I am today. And that's the short version. <laughs> wow. I love that you said you let them bring their children and their pets because that is the reality for a lot of moms. Like, so it's, it's come as you are, come as you are. Come as you are. And what I have found as well is if you have a mom, especially a newer mom with little kids, uh, they will tend to hold back from actually attending something and be themselves. They will hide behind their children or they will they will use their child as point of conversation. So if we can bring that in so it's a safe place where they feel like they can do that until they're able to step forward and, and come into their own, then that is a part of that process that I feel that networking should be, especially now in 2023 where, you know, we, we do have the ability to do that and we, we have integrated family with business. So let's, let's embody that, right? Uh, I think it's brilliant what you're doing. You're showing great compassion and meeting people where they're at, letting, inviting them into a, a, a sacred space where they don't have to change. They just, you're demonstrating some key leadership qualities. So no wonder it's taken off. How long ago did you start this? So the consulting, so, so the Hawkesbury Women in Business has been going for four years um and Sarah Castle Consulting has been for two years so it's all very new but it has grown grown I think because the messaging is so needed right now and I think a lot of people can relate um to those key messages so I, I think that's where the expansions come from but it has been a ride it has been a real ride so how can we support you in this network because you're doing work that really not only matters and a lot of people in this group are doing work that really matters but you're doing work that affects a lot of people what can we do who do you need to be in, put in contact with who needs to know you do this well i think it's i think it's just a message that needs to be spoken about so i don't think it's necessarily anyone that i need to specifically speak to but what I would like to do is touch base with people who have potentially teams that they need a leadership mentor. I would love to help build those toolkits for people to be leading where they are, not necessarily the C-suite executives that we see that, that have just been promoted there. They might not necessarily have the toolkit to be a good leader, but to, to build that toolkit from the ground up, I feel like that's going to be able to alleviate a lot of the pressures that corporate corporate you know all over the world um it'll alleviate a lot of that pressure and a lot of that tension and stress and that hostility uh, and further that ecosystem of family friendly environments uh, because what we're seeing now is this massive lack of excuse me guys but the, the women's statistics of women who actually are accepting roles is quite minimal. So they're not not ticking the boxes. They, they're getting the jobs, but they're actually 
declining them. And a lot of that becomes, dare I say, yeah, dare I say it, that imposter syndrome or um, they're worried about what ramifications they might actually have. Um, and I think that the stat was, it was 33% of the advertising and marketing uh, space in Australia that is, you know, um, the CEOs are female. Now, I use that specific reference because I always thought that the marketing space in particular was very predominantly female, uh, but it turns out that it's still a very low number. So I think it's just really working with everyone to make a better tomorrow for these companies and get the best out of people. Why wouldn't companies really want to get that efficiency? You get a happy worker, you get someone who's confident in what they're doing or able to outsource to where they need to go and have that clarity. You're going to have a better workplace. You're going to have better, better efficiency. The, the production rate's going to be better. So um, it's really about looking at the big picture, I think. Well, I just want to Sorry. applaud your work. I think it's it's fantastic what you're doing. And and to go from that gas station with five dollars you try to find with the two kids, no, no AC, and then you gotta get home. And is this really my life? A lot of people I have been there many times in my life where I'm like, is this really my life? Is if if I go home tomorrow. I go meet God tomorrow. Is this really how I'm going out? Is this really where I want it to end? So it resonates for me, Sarah. And I think like, I look at the, the people in this network here and I just, all I see is this incredible legacy that everyone here is going to be leaving when that day finally does come. Because to lead with that sort of compassion and with that sort of clarity with your own morale, uh, I do think that at the end of it, you are leaving this incredible legacy and that domino effect is so real. I, I think everyone should, you know, give themselves a pat on the back for actually taking the courage to do that. You and I were talking before you came, before we went live about that and, you know, like leading with compassion and heart-centered stuff there's a need there's such a need for that and it's i don't believe it's so that we all align in our beliefs i think it's individuality and freedom of expression those are to me really core foundational things too not we can't all be pumpkins we can't all be butterflies like it takes a collective to i like cooking with garlic and cumin pepper and salt i don't want just salt yeah, yeah, I agree. I wholeheartedly agree. And, you know, it's something that I, I challenge a lot of my clients to do as well. I think to help build that compassion level and challenge yourself as well, I think it's really good to read things that you don't agree with all the time and just see how you process that information. Because if you're able to process that and be constructive about that and not, you know, fly down someone else's throat because you don't necessarily agree with that standpoint, then that's building your tolerance up. Um, and I, I think that's a great thing for everyone to be doing. It just, just to test yourself. How do you actually react to those sort of moments? Because that, they will happen. That's not always easy to do. Like I, I'd like to be oh. someone that, but that's a, Oh, she's a sweetie. Did you have peanut butter? Did you have peanut butter? Did she She's putting it all over me now? So that's good. Crunchy or smooth? What is she like? It's smooth. <laughs> I prefer the crunchy, but yeah, no, she's a smooth. Well, Sarah, this is an absolute pleasure. Hi, sweetie. Um, you want to say hi? Can say we hi. talk about hi? Oh, she's a doll. You are beautiful. <laughs> you pretty? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I bet you're smart too, eh? You're probably very smart. Do you know how to get your way? Yeah. Yes. She sure does. Good. Good. How can people connect with you? Like 
can you pop your links in after I tag you in the comments? Like, yeah. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So uh, all my tags are um, at I am Sarah Custom. I've tried to keep it nice and easy, uh, but you can connect with me there. You can contact me by email, Sarah at sarahcassim.com. Um, but more, you know, I'm always on social media because that's our main marketing avenue. So please, if you have any questions or you need anything, please just let me know. Um, I'm here to help. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, I will, well, let's end the recording here then. Let's keep chatting for a few if that's cool. Sorry? Oh, well, let's, I'll end the broadcast. Let's keep chatting if that's cool for a couple minutes. Okay. No Thanks everyone for watching Empower Network TV. Please Thanks, get with guys. Sarah. If anything she said resonates with you, it sounds like what she's doing is just kick ass in the world. So thanks, Sarah, for being here. I'll just end it now. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll speak to you soon.